What's up, YouTube? Cap over here, and this is this—I believe this is the fifth episode of the podcast. Yes. Uh, I already brutalized his pronunciation, I believe, three times. Four times, not three okay. times. Swing for the fences right now. Go for it, home run. Can you get it? Semerara. <laughs> you were so close. Just the O. Oh. Semerara. No. I just, I just started. <laughs> <laughs> I just started laughing, and then it was just going downhill from there. Close enough. Close enough. Um, High school every every time you got to take a shot at it. <laughs> so <laughs> one day, one yeah, day it's gonna be. Now we're going over uh, Caps Division. In this episode. Yeah, this is the Red Division, and we're gonna go over Mr. Sir Grape, the Latias. Yes, he had. Well, first he had Mega oh. Scizor as his Mega <laughs> Cap. I, I remember. Just, <laughs> <laughs> I always jump right into it, but like Zach said, he drafted the Mega Scissor, and his very first pick was the Latias. There we go. Yeah. Um, I like it. I don't absolutely out the door love it, but it's very solid. It it does it does a lot. Um, it packs a lot of utility, and it can hit Draco Meteor or pack a punch. Um, it's it's obviously not the best first round pick, but I think he actually picked relatively early, so I might like it a little less. But I don't hate it by any means. Um, so far, I've only hated one pick, and I didn't even really hate it. And it was the very last pick of someone's draft, so it's not their fault. Um, <laughs> So, yeah. Um, I love the Latias pick just because it complements Scissors so well. Scissors weak to fire and potentially fighting too. Latias doesn't give a single care about that. Yeah. Latias weak to berry and something else. Something else I blanked out. Um, knockoff. Mega Scissor doesn't care about the knockoff. Yeah. To me, it makes a lot of sense picking up the Latias just because he gets a physical attacker and a special attacker. Plus, he gets a little extra bulk on his team that... I think Mr. Sir Grape is so fond of. Plus, he gets a little, a decent amount of attack too. Yeah, I mean, I, like I said, I don't hate it by any means, and it complements Scizor well. But I like, I like the next pick more, as far as complementing Scizor. His next pick was the Victorion. Yeah, and I, I think it, um, I think it, I like it more in regards to uh, Scizor because anything you want, you want to throw at the Mega Scizor, you just send Vaporeon out. It, it completely, I think, it completely walls. Every weakness and what we need, the like one move that could hit Scizor hard, like an electric attack, could still hit him hard. Um, Latios has got that covered. So, so number one, two, and three, they, good, really great, pick. good synergy, great synergy. Um, but you notice besides Scizor, there's not a pure Power Mon um, right there. Vaporeon's basically a Water Umbreon with a with a, a better offensive move pool because it gets Scald. So. And Ice Beam, so it gets uh, it gets better coverage than like an Umbreon, and it's I would say it's better than Umbreon anyway, um, just because typing it's weak to what wa uh, yeah, Grass and Electric. Thunder. That's it. Yeah. So I, I, I like it. I like the first three picks together. I like the second pick more than the first, but I like the Mega pick so much it doesn't even matter. <laughs> and I like the next pick. I don't like it so early, but I do like the next pick. I just want to point out one one thing about the Victorian though. I do believe it gets Water Absorb, right? I actually have no idea. I'm I'm pretty I'm gonna check that up just because if it does get water absorbed, that means it nullifies Scald. Yeah, it does. Yep. So that means it nullifies Scald, which means Scissor's not fond of getting burnt and having that potential water absorber on his team and that immunity is so big, especially yeah. since like their Scald is a thing. Um, I also let me find it real quick. I wanted to sh point out that he could get depending on what Mons he was running. He could get uh, a little, ch nah, not really. Never mind. I was gonna say he could get a little cheeky, but I was gonna say he could run rain and then run water absorb if he wanted to make it extra annoying. But oh man, his next pick is the Halucha, and, and you go, can go. You uh, go. You, I was gonna say you can go for it. It gives him extra power. I don't like that it was a physical power pick, but it's still power. It's only the third pick, but he, he has Scizor already to hit hard. The Halucha, it, it, it's a good pick. It's fire, uh, flying fire, flying fighting, and <laughs> it, it packs a huge punch. It's very fast, um, so I, I definitely don't like the pick. It's neutral to Stealth Rocks. That's huge, and so acrobatic. It, it's kind of limited. It's kind of pigeonholed into a few, like, like two, three sets, so you know it's either going to be, like, sub Swords Dance or just straight out Swords Dance, but I like, I like it here. Yeah, I really love the Halucha pick just because... Not only is it his team was lacking a bit of speed, because Cesar, Vaporeon, and Latios aren't the quickest. They're not 
that quick. Well, I think Sizzler, they're pretty quick. They're, they're not quick, but I think Scissor gets away with it because he has stab, technician, bullet punch, which is ridiculous and it's yeah. priority. So, yeah, but it has really, really great coverage, which is like stab flying, stab fighting. It's really fast. It hits hard, and it can easily sweep any team. Having that sub with sword dancing, and, uh, unburden too, and unburden. Um, does it get U turn? I think it uh, does. I think it does. So that that helps out too. And I personally, I was looking at this mon a lot. I was looking at it. I was like, this thing is a really good pick. It it has a lot. Like it's it's a really good mon. I'm fond of it. Yeah. I, if I didn't get Infernape with my first pick, um, and somehow if Infernape didn't fall to my like if it fell to my second pick, I wouldn't have taken it. But I was looking at Halucha if I didn't end up with Infernape on my team. Like I said, I really love the Halucha pick. Uh, it makes so much sense to me. It has access to flying press which covers a decent amount of things yeah it's it's so weird it's fighting flying move so it's like i don't know exactly how it works like does it like if it hits a rock type is it neutral yeah i think it's neutral okay okay that makes a little more sense i'm pretty sure that yeah i'm pretty sure that's how it works (laughs) we'll find out (laughs) we'll find out in next episode of dragon ball z dragon ball z all right his next pick i like this pick uh, it's the exact drill. Exacto drill. I like it. drill. I like there this pick on on its own, but as you see his team to come together, I hate it. It's weird, and you'll see as I, you'll I'll be able to explain it better as it goes. But he has one huge problem on his team, and it can't be ignored. But on its own, I like extra drill in this pick, and it's it's stealth rock, rapid spin, just pure power, and a, a steel type. Yeah, it's a it's a fantastic pick. This thing just does so much damage, and it just doesn't care. It has Mole Breaker, which means Road and Wash doesn't care about it. Yeah. Uh, rapid Spinner, one of the best Rapid Spinners that I think yeah, in, the, in the game. And it's it's a ground steel type, which means a lot of things. It means mostly pain for you, anyone yeah. who goes against it. <laughs> basically. And basically the main thing about this thing is that you always have to prepare for it. It could run a Scarf, a Band, a Focus Sash... And you won't know until you're face to face with this thing. So every match, someone's gonna have to look at his team and be like, "This thing can come in. It can wreck my team. I have to find some way to counter it." I think that's a really awesome thing about this guy over here. Yeah, exact drill, exact drill. Yeah, exact drill. This um, moly. <laughs> I love his moly. next pick too. But again, uh, I love it on its own. I hate it when I look at the team. That's interesting. You're gonna have to address me on that. Why? Uh, it is the Drapion. This, you can go. Th- this thing, I love this thing. It's one of my favorite mods. Um, I have a thing for purple-ish mods. I don't know. Um, it, it gets toxic spike, so it gets hazard. It's dark poison, which is a fantastic typing. It is literally weak to only ground. Yeah. It is, and it's yeah. only two times weak. It's very bulky. Gets toxic spikes, gets knockoff, gets poison jab, gets... Uh, it just... It, it's swords dance, home claws. Um, it's, it's a very, very, very good mon. And I, I wanted it, but after I drafted Crobat, I was like, no, I don't need another. And after I drafted Crobat Umbreon, I was like, I don't really need another Dark or Poison type quite yet. And he got taken. But like, if, if he fell two more rounds, Drapion would be on my team. I love this mod because not only it, does it hit hard, it's it's got de- decent defense stats. Plus, it's got knockoff, Fire Fang, uh, yeah. Ice Fang, Thunder Fang. It's got a lot of things that can really work with it. Plus, knockoff, a stab, knockoff. Yeah, it's it's awesome. And plus, it's got a uh, sniper. Oh yeah, I always think this thing is a bug type. Yeah, I don't know. Well, why. it's because it's pre-evolution is Scorpio. Oh. Scorpio is. Okay, maybe that that might be the yeah. confusion word. Um, let, let me see. Uh, its abilities. It's got two good. It's got battle armor, sniper, and keen eye. So. That's- it's oh, it's definitely can't be critted, so its bulk is even bigger. Uh, sniper, if you want to get really really crazy, it doesn't get focus energy, but you know, scope one sniper. It's not bad. Yeah, why, why not? This, this, this thing's scary just because it deals with a lot of fairy types too. Oh, uh, <laughs> fairies can't like fairies can't touch this thing. Yeah, they, you can knock a fairy off and then go for the kill. And either way, you don't want to you don't want to prepare for it. I w- um, real quick, I want to apologize for the noise that's about to happen in my room because. Uh, Adam and Espion just came into my house and he's about to come downstairs and my dogs bark. So, All right, so his next pick is the Electivire. Like I said, electric Pokemon were becoming very, very rare as we went later on in the draft. And for some reason, Mr. Sir Grape seemed to snipe this thing from me too. Really? I I like the pick, but I mean, as, again, with his team, I don't like it. 
Um, I like the pick itself, but I would have preferred him to see him take Electros here. Just because it may not be as fast. Uh, let, let me check. Let me check real quick. Um, I don't want to say something wrong because I can't admit when I'm wrong. Um, let's see here. 95? 95. So it's, it's not as fast, but it does more and it can hit really close to as hard. Uh, the really interesting thing about both the Electros and Electivire is that they both have they both have immunities. So that being yeah. Thunder for Electivire, which boosts its speed, and Ground for Electros. Yeah, definitely. So I really like the pick. I think it's an awesome pick just because this put one in the RU tier does wreck lives. It has access to all the punches. It's got a Wild Charge. What else does it have? Earthquake. Fire Punch, Drain Punch. Uh, does it get Drain Punch? I don't know. Uh, I'm on the page here. I can actually look, so I don't need to speculate. Um, again, sorry about the noise. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear them that well. Uh, I don't see Drain Punch. No, it doesn't. But it does it get does. some fighting type moves, which is Definitely. always awesome because it might most likely go against a Rock Pole and a Steel type or something like that. Considering it's on his team, I do see that his team is really, really really physical that's what oh i was gosh. talking about that's what i was saying the big issue is oh my gosh i didn't really notice it until now but that's the big issue with his team you if say he runs into a tangrowth how in the heck is he going to handle a tangrowth i mean obviously he won't uh, but like he has a hound doom but all you have to do is like switch out and switch back in he has nothing that could touch a grass wall yeah that's that's a really solid point over there. His aspect does somewhat touches, can touch a grass type, uh, the frost last. I don't like this pick. Like the only like there were much better ghost types available and much better ice types available. Um, the only thing frost last does is it's fast. Yes, it's fast. It's more of a suicide lead. I guess he needed some stealth rocker, that, some viable stealth rockers. It's or it's, can uh, frost last stealth rock? spikes. Spikes. Oh, we got some I guess, hazards yeah. on the field. I guess it can get hazards. I forgot about that. But still, I don't. I don't. He could have got something much better here. I think than this. I think the way it gives you in hazards and a spin blocker, you can get elsewhere. And like I said, there are better ghost types available. Yeah, yeah. Because literally, its base stats are not a single one is higher than eighty, except for its speed. Seventy HP, eighty attack, seventy defense, eighty special attack, seventy special defense, one hundred and ten speed. I just. I have a soft spot for Frostlass itself. Oh, I love the Mon and how it looks and stuff, like, on its own. But, like, as from a competitive point, if this it's, was his last pick, if honestly, if he swapped sense. Swampert in this pick, I wouldn't have an issue. But the fact that he, like, risked missing out on Mon, like, Swampert to take Frostlass kind of bugs me. Like, irks me about this pick. Uh, should we move on to his next pick, though? Yeah, and I think this was, if he didn't take this Mon, he'd be in serious trouble. I actually don't like this pick. You don't? I don't. I really, I I don't like the Houndoom. I think there was better fire type Pokemon out there. True. Typhlosion was out there, I think, still. And Houndoom's not. It's, it's a base 95 speed. It can't take. I, I'm guessing most likely you cannot take a match punch because mm. its defense is so pitiful. I think it can take one but live on one as long as it's full health and not boot, and the off, attacker's not boosted and it's a like 100 base attack or lower. But it would be in red no matter what. Yeah, and that's the thing that I don't really like about Houndoom. It's it's a one-time use Pokemon, and if you're going against a fighting Pokemon with uh, Match Punch, why why would you be doing that? Like, yeah. you're sacking off something that could potentially take out your big grass weakness. I I think he could have desperately used like the Mesprit I had or something like that because he need. I, I like this pick, and the uh, I hate I do, like I, I agree with you about the pick. I don't like the pick itself alone, but I like it for Team Synergy. He I, has. With with Houndoom, he has three special attackers on the team, two one of which is Vaporeon. So he needed special attacking, and I'm sure there were better special attackers, better fire types, better dark types here. But the fact that he addressed his need for special attacking, and he still his last two picks should have been special attackers, but one of them I can't really complain about. So I think it makes the pick a little better in my eyes. It's still not a great pick. Yeah, considering where it's at and what was left, I. I think he could have got a Zelf too. Yeah, I'd, how much point? I depends on how much points he did have. Well, he could, he finished with twenty, so he could have easily got a Zelf instead of a couple Mons. Yeah, so 
I'm making the prediction. This is might be one of his mons that he drops in or, the redraft. I, I think. Yeah, the, I I think it will be too, but I think because, I, I think it needs to be either Drapion, Electrovire, or his last pick or Frostless that he needs to drop because of his massive physical presence. So he needs some more special, but I think he will end up dropping Houndoom too. All right. Uh, should we go into his next pick? Yeah, and I don't hate the pick, but I don't like it. Uh, yeah, yeah. I've I've got the same general consensus of he, it, Mister Mime. Need, he needed a fairy. He gets he gets a fantasy core. Mister Mime can set screens up, um, but it uh, it's not fantastic. Well, Mister Mime's an NU mon, and even I don't see Mister Mime used a lot in NU. And there might be an obvious reason why, but. I, I don't see it doing a lot of work. Yeah, I mean, actually, I can see it, it's it's super frail. Um, in the sense, it's sixty five base defense and forty base HP. But Adam and Espeon point out it gets technician and it has a hundred special attack and ninety speed. So if you want it to be your designated HP, like hidden power person, or like he he was pointing out magical leaf, shockwave, stuff like that, it can. Uh, I just. Outside of the fairy typing and the um, the screens, I don't see the value in taking him here. Uh, yeah, I just like he he gets some other good stuff too. Not nothing like amazing. Um, I, I I don't know. I don't I don't like, necessarily. I, love I guess he pick. wanted to address his need for a special, uh, just like a solid special defender. Well, yeah, and, and Mr. Mime gives him some special attacking, but I, I don't know. If, I don't know if Mr. Mime lives long enough with 40 HP. A knockoff, I think, will kill him. I think one knockoff, even though it's neutral from a mildly strong dark type, will kill him. Like a Drapion knockoff might kill him. Good thing he drafted a Drapion. Yeah, I'm, I was just pointing out Dra- Drapion's got like 90 attack, something like that, and I think a Drapion knockoff would kill him one shot. Yeah, I, I'm just not fond of like I like the Frostlass for what it does. But I'm just hounding him and Mr. Mind back to back. I think he could have gotten something better for See, it. We're, we're the same on those three picks, except you question Houndoom more, I question Frostless more. Yeah, yeah. Um, last pick, again. He makes up. He makes up for it. I, I, I like this pick. I, I, love, I love the pick, again, by itself. But for the team, I don't want, love it. I don't love it. Because he needed special. <laughs> he needed special. <laughs> And he could have got me- I, well. No way. He picked after me, so he could not have got Mesprit. But he needed special attacking. He has two good special attackers. One is not very, not going to last long. Actually, neither of them are. Both of them are very frail to both sides. And he's got Lottie, so he's not screwed special attacking wise. But that's two psychic special attackers. And so I like Swampert because it hits hard. Stealth rocks. Uh, one weakness. Um, so all oh, that's awesome. But when looking at the team as a whole, it kind of is outweighed. His, his last pick was the Swampert, if we didn't mention it. I like the Swampert just because it's it's a great mon, considering yeah. where it was picked and why why it was picked. I like the Swampert. It does some things, but I really do feel like his last picks might have just been just, just something. I, I don't know what he was thinking about and, his last I mean, picks. He might it. have something in mind that we don't see. But yeah, maybe it's pretty obvious, and we're like, oh, I just think that. he's way too physical and didn't invest enough in special attacking. Because, like I said, you throw a dark type or a steel type out there, he's in trouble. Like big, a big special trouble. wall, because like there's there's no way like he like Mister Mon would go down to a sucker punch one shot again. Uh, Houndoom couldn't touch it really if it was a good special wall, and Draco Meteor would probably hurt. But like you're not going to leave. Oh, and then Sucker Punch could could do a significant amount of damage to Latias. So I think I think the fact that he doubled down on Psychic as special attackers hurts him a little bit. Well, the thing that I this is the thing that really I see on his team is that it's going to be hard for him to build momentum. Yeah, it's he's his prediction game is going to have to be really good just because he doesn't have. He's I got only one volt. One volt switch to U turn. That's not. It's going to be hard to build momentum on that. He doesn't have a lot of mons that can like stay on the field and set up. He's got Drepion, he's got Electivire, and he's got Halucha. And even though Electivire, Electivire is not that good at setting down. Yeah, Houndoom, not Hound- that great. Yeah, nasty plot, but you have to get it on a like a switch, and then Scizor. Um, 
I think if he if he had more Volt turn, I think the the Mister Mime and Houndoom would be less of a liability because you could get them in, you could predict the switch, and then you turn into them, and then they would get a chance to do what they can do. I mean, I reflect with Mister Mime is going to be helpful, but still forty HP, like sixty five defense. Like and, re- reflect can only do so much. Yeah, yeah. It's absolute max defense is one twenty eight. It's absolute max HP is one forty seven. And maybe he could have a plan or something, but I don't see it. The, yeah, it's I, I don't see it. The, and he he has got some great picks. He's got some of my favorite picks, like the Hallucha, the Excadrill. Actually, his first six mons individually are some of my favorite picks, and then his last mon is one of my favorite picks. But he went too physical, and it's one of my least favorite drafts I've seen. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to agree. It's, the scissors gonna have to put in the finest, the finest work. It's gonna really have to carry the team. Yeah, and even then. It's going to be tough. It's it's going to be obvious. Let's bring a will o whisper Yeah, I think if they bring a will o whisper they're in trouble. I, it, no, well, Vaporeon gets Heal Bell, so he's not he's not screwing that department. He's got Flash Fire Hound Doom. So it, you can't just will o wisp willy-nilly. But it will o wisp if you take out the Vaporeon and the Hound Doom or whatever, then will o wisp is going to ravage him. Like, it's going to just not be good. Uh, the only way that I see this team working is that he's unpredictable on the physical side the, the, yeah you don't, he I, sorry go ahead yeah you don't really see what sort of physical attackers he's going to be able to bring and maybe that can build him some some momentum i don't know why i'm mumbling my momentum <laughs> uh I, that could bring him some momentum and maybe that could help out on his situation what he has and what he was planning the thing it's, is the thing is I, I i think i could guarantee four mons every week uh, medicus or lati vaporeon then either exudril and swampert every week Mm-hmm. So one of the, those four mons, I think, would have to be every week for him to be viable. And then at that point, you know, okay, I need electric, I need ice, and I need fire. He's in a really tough division, and it's going to be interesting to see how maneuvers his Pokemon but, around um, that. My bold prediction, I meant to do this for every team, but I only did it for one. I think I think Drapion, besides excluding Mega Scizor, I think Drapion will be one of his MVPs. I think it's going to have to be an MVP in this team. <laughs> Like, I just think... I think Drapion might be one of the better Mons uh, in the whole league just because the prevalence of fantasy cores and fairy types. And steel types don't wall him as well as they would hope to because knockoff from him is still going to hurt. Like, most of the steel types are physically defensive, so it's not going to be amazing, but they're not going to sit there and enjoy taking a knockoff on the switch in. And it, and he could set up before then. So, you know, I, I think Drapion could put in more work than some people may think. Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe. So we'll see. We'll see how that works out. All right, so I think we should move on to the next pick, and that would be a person in your division, the Minnesota Eon Twins. Yeah, that's Joseph Six. And, and uh, his, oh. I, I was just going to say, I think he had the second best draft out of anybody. Ooh. Uh, his very first pick was the Arcanine. Well, he had Mega Venusaur real quickly, which oh, I, I, I personally believe is, like, one of the best Megas. But, yes, his first pick was Arcanine and again I I think he could have got I think he might have been able to get it in the second round but if Arcanine's the mon he wanted I don't see any problem with taking it second overall just because if he didn't think he was going to get in the second round because it can be bulky it can be very offensive it can be very bulky um, it, can, it has recovery reliable recovery and uh, it gets intimidate so I don't uh, the, the, there's not I don't think there's much to say just note that he I think he could have got it later but I don't see anything wrong with taking it this early just because if he thought it would it wouldn't fall past the second round which it very very well might not have I think it's fine where he took it I I personally love the first pick it was a it was one of the better BL Pokemon which you needed uh, that early in the draft I think it's good because there wasn't a lot of a decent fire po one that does what Arcanine does, mm-hmm. and uh, Arcanine can it can do a lot of things. It can be like a stally defensive mon. It can be a physical attacker. Uh, it's get it has Moonlight, Will O Wisp, both combat, Wild Charge. It's got a decent amount of moves where it's pretty much unpredictable. Yeah. Um. Plus, it pairs up so well with the Venusaur. Oh, definitely, so definitely. Well. So. I think considering what, this was his first pick, he needed this Arcanine to really... He needed he needed something that paired up well with Venusaur, and I think Arcanine's that mod to do that job. Yeah, and even better um, is his next pick, just in the whole context of things. And he got Empoleon. So he got a Defogger. 
he got a steel type he got a stealth rocker he got a solid special attacker and he got a water type so while the weaknesses to Empoleon are there like um, electric uh, ground I think ground still weakness he had he has and he answers the ground weakness with his next two picks and then two picks later so you're not, no one no one against his team is going to be firing off ground attacks because he has four immunities to it on this on his team which is crazy um, Nice. Um, two levitators and two flying types, but uh, I, I, I really like the Empoleon pick, especially with the first two picks. It gives them a water, grass, fire core. Not an amazing one, but I, I like each mon individually enough and how they complement each other enough to say that it might be not. It's not, definitely not the best first three picks, including the Mega Round, but it is one of the more. Uh, it's up there. I so far his first three picks. Like the Venusaur, Arc Nine, and Napoleon, they make sense. They make way too much sense to me, and um, they they may not be up there on like ranking itself, but team synergy wise, it's really and, good. And, and again, I think it could have fell. He could have got it like two picks later. But looking at what he got, the next three picks, I'm not going to complain because I honestly could see him taking the next two mons he took at that pick and not being. I mean not making any notice or comment at all. I think Empoleon was a little early, but it's not a huge deal considering the next two mons he got. So go ahead and finish yours. I'm sorry. I just wanted to get that in. Uh, I, I, I think that's a perfect se segue to uh, his next pick was actually the and Hydreigon. At the, <laughs> at the third you round, I thought it was you. a huge steal. Um, I was kind of looking at it uh, after I lost guard jump, but I said, nah, I got to find another way to... Uh, do stuff. I gotta find another route. Like, most of my draft was improv after Infernape. I had no idea what I wanted to do. I was just trying to fill roles and get synergy. Because um, I had synergy planned, but I lost my badass fantasy course. <laughs> or, like, in the first two picks. The, the first pick of both rounds. Of the first two rounds, I lost the mons I oh, wanted. Um, but it's not a huge deal. Um, but Hydreigon is beautiful. I love Hydreigon. Hits hard, hits very hard, immune to ground attacks. He adds four times a week to fairy, but he's already got two fairy or three fairy resist on the team already in his first three picks. So he can afford it. Um, yeah. And uh, he's got two mons that are super effective against fairy. Stab super effective. So Hydreigon's definitely another synergy pick, but it's a high value pick. I think Hydreigon's a first, a t first couple round mon selection that fell to the third. And I think, let's see, he picked second. So he he kind of picked him close to back to back and Polygon Hydreigon. So I don't think he, I think he picked him in to be sure that he got the steel type. And then if, if he couldn't get Hydreigon, I kind of think the Mon he took after Hydreigon he would have gone for. Uh, the, the But he ended mm -hmm. up getting them both anyway. Um, the only problem with his team as a whole, and I'll mention it at the end, I see one big problem with his team at the end, but um, uh, I'll mention it then. Um, but. Uh, it, I, I really like the Hydreigon pick. I'm really interested to, see, to hear what the big problem is because I've been looking up and down his team and I'm like, I can't believe I have to face this twice in the season. Uh, his next pick was the Thunderous Therion. And once again, he, he gets a really good pick. It's a fast, hard-hitting Mon, special attacker. Has the Hydreigon already, but the Thunderous Therion, it answers a lot of questions. I always get mixed up which one's which. Therion is... The, the Volt Absorb one, right? Yes, it is the Volt Absorb one. Um, it has, I think it has higher special attack than the normal one, but the other one's like, it's either bulkier or faster or something. But the other one gets Prankster, you know, my guy. I I, I think he would have gone Farian, um if he didn't get Hydreigon. So the fact that he could get both, like I have no prior knowledge. I'm talking out of my butt on this, but I kind of feel like he won a big hitting special Mon that could it was immune to ground because he had i think two ground weaknesses i don't know if the answer is actually weak to ground but it's neutral to it at least and so he wanted a mon to answer that and he and he ended up getting two and it, it hits hard it's electric it gets volt switch it is just a monster so not necessarily a need but a uh, a, a luxury he could afford that's that's pretty nuts if that's just a luxury <laughs> should we just move on to his his next pick uh, yeah, and um, you can go ahead and talk about some because I've been talking a lot. So. Uh, it's not, it's it's fine. I think you know a bit more about the OU tiers. I'm a bit more familiar with like a bit lower of the tiers. Yeah, uh, which is totally cool. But his next pick is the crocodile, and this this guy gets sucker punch. It's a moxie intimidate user. 
that stab ground earthquake is going to be so clutch. Mm -hmm. but like once, once again, this is a really good pick. This is an awesome pick. And so far, I think just from his one, two, three, four, five, six, six mods that he's chosen, he's got a bit of everything from each genre. So he's got grass, poison, fire, steel, water, dragon, and dark. Electric he's got fine. another electric fine and another dark ground. Yep. And that's a decent spread. They don't share a lot of common weaknesses and Crocodile complements each of these mons. And what, if you looked at his four drafts or yeah, his, his couple drafts, you'd be saying, hey, he needs some physical presence on his team other than the Arcanine. And Crocodile is exactly yep. what he needed. And getting Crocodile in, in the fifth round is such a good pick, such a good pick. Yeah, and I think it works well with his following picks. Like you said, he needs physical attackers. And with his next pick, he gets um, an a another, like I said, another answer to his ground weakness, which I kind of almost think he overcompensated for. But he gets a very versatile mon and a Zelf. A Zelf, when I say versatile, it runs like four sets, but one's physical, one's suicide lead, one's special. It can hit hard on both sides. It's Zen headbutt knockoff or um, psychic whatever, like hidden power or something, or self stealth rock normal gen stealth rock focus sash explosion, or if you think you'll live, stealth rock normal gem explosion can knock out one mon and get your stealth rocks up. So I think a Zelf is a fantastic pick. I wanted one of the late trio and I got him. I did not want a Zelf just because I wanted more versatility. Uh, but a Zelf 125 base attacks and 115 base speed is crazy. So it's definitely a great pickup considering it gives him some versatility. It gives him a second knockoff user, which I mean, he has plenty of knockoff users because I think Venusaur learns it and I think uh, Thunderous learns it. So, but um, it gives him a, a, another effective knockoff user. Yeah, I, I really love it. But he needed another defensive mod and his next pick sort of answers that. Actually, it answers it perfectly. It is the Gliscor. And like you said early on, he might have overcompensated for the ground weakness that was becoming somewhat obvious in, I think, four mons that have ground but immunities. But I, I think Gliscor um, gives him some... Uh, I think he needed some bulk at this point. Like, he he kind of... Like, he had some solid bulk in Crocodile, but he needed, like, a mon that was kind of dedicated to being bulky. And getting Gliscor this late... Um, it actually sparked a little controversy because he took him and then I didn't have an OUB <laughs> and so and then the OUB here hit 12 mons so um, it kind of sparked a little bit of trouble but we sorted out really quickly because we're all we're all cool we know we know we're not the league isn't set up perfect yet so we got sorted out and I got my OUB pick with the same round um, but Gliscor is great it can't be poison because you run toxic heal it, so it can't be status you got it's just a pain in the ass to deal with because it's so bulky physically and it gets roost and plus it hits hard yeah it has u-turn too yeah tr true it's it's a lot more versatile than you think you would think like protect to get to guarantee the toxic heal you don't have to do protect but if you think you're gonna get knocked off early stab eq uh, or just stab ground um you can run a hidden power on it you don't ideally you want it but you can u-turn roost toxic um, it gets a lot, uh, it, it's a pain in the butt to deal with. It is, it is. And like I said, he needed that extra bulk too, uh, an extra defensive mon so that his Arcanine isn't as predictable every match. Yeah. And speaking of bulk, who's yeah. more bulkier than Snorlax? Um, you'll, you, I don't, I, I don't know if you've noticed the common weakness yet or the, like the bigger weakness I've noticed, but this helps address that set, said weakness. Uh, I'm not going to mention it again until we get to the team recap, but Snorlax, very good bulky. Uh, just you, uh, you could run a lot of stuff with it. Like, yeah, there's like the belly drum set, the rest set, but you can get creative with Snorlax, I think. You could run like assault vest or something crazy like that. I, I don't, that might be common. I don't know. I don't, I've not played with a lot of Snorlax, even though he was the first ever competitive mon that I bred. But he definitely, with his next couple picks, including Glass Gore and the one after Snorlax, gets that bulk that he needed pretty badly. I really love the Snorlax. He was on my uh, team last season. The reason I brought Snorlax so much was because it has thick fat, it has immunity to poison, so you can't get poisoned. It, um, it makes a good pairing Curse with the fairy. Is really, yeah, Curse Lax is really good. Mm -hmm. uh, it can learn Explosion. <laughs> Stab Explosion. I, I did that. I did that against Crumb. <laughs> I think, uh, oh yeah, I remember. I watched that. I, oh man. And... A choice banded return 
hurts a lot. It two shot a glide score. Wow. That might have that might have been not heavily invested in defense, uh -huh. but still, that's well, saying yeah. a lot. It, uh, yeah, it, Snorlax definitely packs some power as well as some much needed bulk, and you can definitely bulk it up while giving up very little power. Yeah, and it can take hits. It can take hits. But his next mod is the throw. I the throw. I severely underrated this mod and its partner. This thing is bulky as all freaking hell, and it hits hard. It has 120 HP, 85 base defense is not great, but not bad. But with 120 HP, like it doesn't have to be great. Um, and 100 attack, like this thing is not, like I I would have drafted one uh, this thing. I don't know about the other one. I don't know about sock. I assume it's faster. This thing is just straight, like this late. I like this pick. He need bulk. He got bulk. Yeah, sock. Well, sock. I don't like sock actually at all. It has 125 <laughs> attack and 85 base speed. Like that's not. Yeah, he definitely got the better of the sock and throw, and sock went earlier. Um, it was definitely a great mon to pick up because he needed bulk and it can still hit hard. He's finding good, he's finding bulky mons that can hit hard and Arcanine, Gliscor, uh, Snorlax, throw, and I, I would say Crocodile is a little bulky. I went, not significantly bulky, but it definitely hits hard too. Yeah, the throw definitely makes a lot of sense having that potential circle, circle throw, circle throw. That, yeah. I believe that's a yeah. thing, right? Having that circle throw is always nice. Bulk up, it can set up on you if you don't have the appropriate things to deal with it. Uh, the only thing, it's a bit slow, but the rest of his team really makes up for the lack of speed that throw has. Yeah. I, I don't think at this point, Joseph was at all concerned no, about the speed tiers. No, because with Arcanine, honestly. Thunderous, Crocodile, and... Uh, as yeah, Zelf. I thought I said Zelf. I looked at it, and that was the first thing in my mind. And the Zelf, <laughs> I think he's good. I think Hydreigon's even pretty quick. Um, I know Hyd Scarfed Hydreigon's common, um, so it might not be too quick, but quick enough that if you run Scarf, it's going to be hard to outspeed uh, base set. So it also, if you hear me typing, it's because I'm looking up a bunch of stuff. Hydreigon's 98 base speed, so he does have great speed. And wow, I didn't realize Hydreigon had 90 defenses across the board. Yeah, yeah so, that's a pretty yeah. scary one. But the, he needed a pure fighting type Pokemon, Joseph, yeah. and that's what he dressed in throw. Which is pretty awesome because for its value and for where he got it, I think it's a yeah, real steal. Finally, we have his last pick, Klotzer, and you know it, I think this pick was inconsequential. I don't think he could have gone wrong with it. Um, I think he did the right thing and got more special attacking. Um, I think he, I honestly think he just went with the best special attacker that was left, and it definitely was Klotzer. Uh, so Klotzer is actually what it does is 120 special attack and it has like not almost 90 defenses and then after that it's got nothing left on the tank but it's got mega launcher so dark pulses uh air, air, water pulses and you know stuff like that it's going to hit hard so um i want to see some water pulse sets run people b league mega blast horse i want to see water pulse this is the only mod that didn't make sense to me and i i think that's pretty good because well, it makes a little more it's sense to me because of that common weakness I was talking about. But go, continue. I'm, I'm interested because I still have not yet discovered this common weakness. But every other mon that... He, like, there's other things on his team that does Closter's job better. And I don't think I'm going to see Closter maybe once. Once in a blue moon, we're going to see this Closter. And I'm going to be surprised. But I don't think we're going to see it that often because he's got Hydreigon. He's got Thunder's T. Azul, Apollyon, they do his job a lot yeah, better. I, well, I think a lot of it was his move and coverage that Klotzer gets. It gets Flash Cannon, it gets U-Turn, even though you wouldn't really run it. Uh, it gets Focus Blast, Sludge Bomb, Sludge Wave, Shadow Ball, Ice Beam, obviously, uh, Venom Shock even. So I think the coverage might be one of the reasons. It gets Aura Sphere, Dragon Pulse, Dark Pulse. So it gets a lot of coverage. Um, yeah. But I'm going to go ahead and mention that weakness. And he has it covered pretty well, but I think it could cause some problems is Ice Types because he has Gliscor four times weak to ice, he has Hydreigon weak to ice, Crocodile weak to ice, uh, Thunderous weak to ice, and with the exception of uh, Gliscor, because I just looked up Crocodile, it's not really that bulky, I was just talking on my butt, never play with Crocodile, um, they're not particularly <laughs> bulky mons, so if they get hit by a nice attack, they're not going to appreciate it. Yeah, he has his first three mons, but Venusaur, Mega Venusaur is still weak to ice, and if he switches regular Venusaur in, it's going to not appreciate that at all. He has Arcanine, he has uh what's it called the thing and polion and he has uh snorlax but he's not gonna run big fat snorlax every week and oh there's a rabbit outside my window and he has and now he has clotzer so it's hey. he's got it covered pretty well now 
but I still think ice types might be the, his biggest issue going into the season. The only biggest issue that I saw on his team was you get a good fighting type on against Joseph, he might struggle a bit because of Polion, Hydrogen, Crocodile. Uh, most yeah. fighting Pokemon ones have ones. knockoff, so even as a, they might not deal a, quite well yeah. with the fighting type mons, but he's got a decent amount of buff yeah. that he might be able to address that itself. Even fairy types seem to match up pretty well on his team, but once you have 11 Pokemon, there's going to be there's well, bound to be common weaknesses on your side. Well. I think with uh, Impulse, well, not really yeah. actually now that I look at it. He's got, what, four weaknesses to Fairy? I think Fairy might be his biggest issue because his only answers are Empoleon and Arcanine. Like I said, so I've been looking yeah, at I think Fairy is actually a bigger time. threat to Ice, which is good news for me because I have one of the best Ice types and one of the best Fairy types in the game, but I only have to play him once. So, um, All right, so let's, uh, let's move on to the next one, and that is you. Yeah, that's me. All right, so I'm going to take the lead on this like you all took right. the lead on mine. Not much to say about the first Mega pick real quick. Um fantastic love it it worked amazing for you last year you led the league in kills you had a good record no reason to change what worked uh, i just need to change the supporting cast around it um mm -hmm. and you did that well with your first two picks uh sylveon i like the pick you got you if he trained had gotten picked you would not have sylveon but he trained to knock it or if he trained got picked by anybody else than who picked it you would not have sylveon but you did get sylveon sylveon can do a lot of things hyper voice is vicious um a cleric it's a special wall. Um, you know, it, it answers Charizard's weaknesses well. And Charizard itself is not weak to fairy. So that's a that's a plus. That's yeah. a definite plus. Um, your, uh, was Sylveon your go-to immediately? Like, was that who you locked in on one, or did someone get picked before you could take him? I actually locked on to Sylveon because Sylveon can do a lot of things right. Um, last season, I was lacking in a fairy type because I, I didn't have a fairy type I don't think and Sylveon hits really hard with Hyper Boys it, it's unpredictable it can be a heal bell can pass on wishes it gets baton pass like I said it does a lot of things well and I felt like it it, it complements Charizard X quite well it, it does I, I like the pick a lot and then I like Ferrothorn a lot I honestly feel like it's the second best option for you in this situation besides Registeel and that's just because Registeel is typing. Uh, yeah. Frothorn, if you absolutely need to, can be specially defensive. It gets, does it get Stealth Rocks? I think it gets Stealth Rocks. Um, it gets Spikes. It gets Leech Seed. It gets. It can hit pretty decently hard. Uh, give it Gyro Ball. Um, give it um, a Power Whip. Um, obviously, there's the four times weakness to Fire, but with Charizard, it's not that huge of a deal yet. Or it might not even be a huge deal. We'll have to see how the draft goes. Um, so I like the Frothorn pick. It's, I think it's the be second best steel Pokemon in regards to a fancy core. And I know you didn't like... You're like, oh, what's a fancy core going into the draft? <laughs> yeah, but a a real quick, a fancy core it works so well because um, Char the dragon covers many of the basic weaknesses. Fire, water, electric, all those. And so he covers the steel type. Steel type covers the poison and the fairy for the dragon and the fairy and then the fairy covers dragon uh, for the dragon so um, definitely works well together you got a good situation you got a grass type without the poison weakness as well so that's nice um, yeah that was really important okay never mind my dogs I thought they were doing something they weren't supposed to be doing <laughs> anyway uh, your next pick oh, wow. I, I like it as well I don't love it just because I think you could have used points elsewhere but I do like it um, Conkelder is straight power. It gets priority. It gets drain punch, uh, guts, assault vested. Conkelder is an animal to deal with. I, 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 again, like I said, I think you could have kind of gone like uh, BL UU here and got a similar powerful mon. Not quite as powerful, but save points for a little bit later in the draft. But again, I don't have any issue with Conkelder going here. It, it, it's it again. It adds to. Because another thing besides the fantasy core was, uh, someone mentioned in B League was a Steel Fairy Fighting Core, which works just as well. Um, psychic covers the or Steel covers the Psychic weakness. Uh, fighting deals also with the Poison weakness. Um, it doesn't like it doesn't deal with the basic like Fire stuff like that as well. But a Fighting type's not super. It, it's neutral to Fire and stuff. So 
It's not a huge deal. So I like King Kelder. Was he your was he your first option there, or were you he, looking? At he, <laughs> this is where I mentioned you can see in the same um, draft number, Halucha was picked up. Yeah, Crobat was picked up. Let's see. Yeah, Crobat was picked up, and I was like, you know what? I need power. Finding types are really great, and last season I found out that I was getting poisoned or thunder waved or burnt, and I was like, hey, what sort of yeah. Um, has decent coverage on everything. Conk Elder seemed to fit the bill, and he really complimented my team really good. Yeah. Um, I don't like your next pick at all. <laughs> I really do, I don't like it. Uh, it. It's my I like it more than... Uh, who, what was that pick by the Starmies? <laughs> Sneasel? Yeah, I like it more than Sneasel, but I feel like it's... You didn't need Meloetta personally, I don't think. I, 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 why did you draft it? I'll let you give you. I'll give you a chance to uh, explain why because you gave me that shot. So why why did you draft Meloetta here? Um, Meloetta is one of those random po one that I was looking at, and it sports a one twenty eight special defense and a one twenty eight in special attack. And I was looking at my team. And I was like, it's really physical. Uh, Conkel there, Furthorn, and Charizard X. It'd be nice to get something that is that is a special attacker. But on top of that, Meloetta is unpredictable just because it can change forms, right? And when you yeah. change forms, it bases its speed to 128 to 128 attack. It gets things like knockoff, close combat, and it sort of eliminates the need of... It, well, it, it's, it addresses my need for speed in my team that I needed. Yeah. Um. Uh, plus it gets things, it gets great coverage. It can learn trick. I think it can learn trick room. Thunderbolt, energy ball, shadow ball, immunity to ghost. And to me, it made a lot of sense just to add to my team just because I didn't have, as you can tell, I don't have the weaknesses for Meloetta. Okay, I, I, I see what you're saying. And I, it's still, it's a great reasoning. It makes me like to pick a lot more. I just think you could have gone in a couple different ways. Um, doubling down the fighting weakness isn't huge, but with with the league with a lot of psychic and fairy types, um, it could come back and bite you. You have the resistances to deal with it, but I, I just would have liked to see another type of special attacker here. And I, you might have you might have just liked the special attack and the bulk, which I totally get. Just I kind of would have gone a different way and spread the typing. Um, Amana kind of would have looked at not taken over Meloetta per se, but I like Crawdon. It doesn't have the bulk. But it can be, it's both physical and special with adaptability, uh, dark pulse, uh, you know, stuff like that. Um, but I, I don't hate it as, I don't hate it as much as na as I did a few minutes, a few minutes ago before <laughs> you explained it. So, um, your next pick I like, Dawn Fan. It does, it, it is a rapid spinner. Um, it's very good defensively, not great specially defensively, but it can get Ice Shard, which is awesome priority to have. It can get, because it deals with grass types, gets Earthquake. Um, and that Ice Shard does pack more of a punch than you'd expect. Uh, it gets Earthquake, it gets Knock Off, uh, it gets Stealth Rocks. So it's definitely a good pick here, and I like it. Was he your go-to spinner, or were you looking at someone who got taken earlier? Uh, he was it, Honestly, he was my go-to spinner. Um, I saw last season that he put in a lot of work for Crump. Yeah. And you put a choice ban on it, it... And you can't forget how, no matter how bulky it is, it can actually do a decent amount of damage for things that aren't prepared. And uh, with my next pick, it actually does make a lot of sense on what I was doing. Mm -hmm. And um, y you can uh, sort of bring it from there just because, yeah, yeah, uh, it, it'll make his, more sense. Your next pick is Meowstic, and I, I like the pick. Um, it's like a cheap Klefki, and cheap, I mean, points wise. Um, Prankster screens uh like it, it can do it gets fake out um and it, it can do a lot of things that pester the other team so um what is it are you or and you it was an NU pokemon and you okay then i love it i love yeah. it yeah uh, i love uh, it even more that's that's definitely one of the better NU picks that's a as um 60 points cheaper or 140 po or 100 points cheaper than klefki uh is so definitely love the meowstic pick here um Without revealing too much, I this was my go-to NU Pokemon. This is what a lot of 
my um, team came down to was yeah. whether or not could I get a Meowstic that could potentially set up a Sunny Day, Trick Room, yeah. uh, set up the screens, Thunder Wave. Can it do all of that? And I'm like, Clapkey is a really great mon. He put in a lot of work, but is he worth the points? No, he's not. Yeah. Um, there's other things I can do, better things than Clapkey can do. And Meowstic, I believe, I've read it a couple times in Showdown, and it surprisingly can tank hits. Mm -hmm. It has charm. My team can set up on a lot of things, and that's what I—that's what really drew me towards Meowstic itself, because I believed it was one of those things that can I can bring in every week, or I can bring in whenever, and people are going to be like, I was preparing for that. Yeah, okay. And in regards of like, oh, that thing's not going to come in. Yeah, yeah. So the, the, you're, you're basically it's surprise bulk and it's versatility like it's prankster versatility is the is going to definitely like bring your team together. Um, at this at this point, you're still a little heavy on the physical side even with Meloetta and yeah. uh, Sylveon. Both are great f uh, special attackers. Uh, Meowstic is it physical or special? Like if you had uh, to attack with it, special. Special. Okay, so that's not bad. I'm pretty sure. Your next pick I like in the sense that it's special, but can you explain to me why you went with him, Tornadus? Uh, Tornadus, I really need a strong flying Pokemon, and I yeah. had the UU points left. There weren't a lot of UU Mon that had really good flying attacks. Yeah. Um, and as you can tell, I think Swellow was picked. Yes, it before was. Before I could get my hands on Swellow. So, Tornadus was... Tornadus has a really good viable ability, plus in a team that isn't the quickest against others, Yeah. Tornadus can set up Tailwind with the prankster so you'll always get the tail one up for sure yeah. i'm so i'm Plus, starting to see it more now i i already liked it because you need special and he gets uh i don't know if he gets hurricane i'm pretty sure he gets hurricane but he also he gets, gets hurricane. he gets air slash um and and stuff like that so he also gets knock off superpower so he gets plenty of good coverage so i already like the pick uh, and i know i was stating physical stuff when i was complaining about special but he also gets focus blast and uh other stuff uh, so I like the pick already, but you explaining it like that uh, gets more. Was th was there a reason why you went uh, him over Farian? Uh, Farian costed more points, and having that regenerator is nice. But looking at the divisions, mm -hmm. there's a couple matchups that I see that could actually switch the match in my favor. And Tornadus Therion actually does the job that okay. I needed to do. Okay. I was just wondering because uh, Farian's a better special attacker, and with Regenerator and U-Turn and stuff like that, I, I saw it as more of an answer for your team, but that, that makes perfect sense. Um, your next pick also addresses the special side, but also does some other things that could be sneaky good for you. Um, Politoed. And at first I was shocked to see you pick this because it hurts your Mega, but I thought about it, and with your last pick, your third pick, and the pick right before this, there's a good synergy. Um, send Politoed out, get the rain up, then you have 100% accuracy Hurricane, your four times weakness to fire is reduced, and your very last Mon gets a little bit of help if you want to do it. Also, uh, well, actually, that's, that's pretty much it, but y you get a lot of you get a lot of help from Politoed's just rain. It's not a rain team by any means, but three Mons that... Uh, three months where two of them, two of them are going to be pretty vital to your success. Get a lot of help from Politoed if you want to run Politoed. Yeah, that's basically Politoed. I think at this point, my picks were already picked a long time ago. Yeah, and it was just finding what worked best. Meowstic, Tornadus, and Therion, Politoed, and the next two picks, maybe the second last. Those were already keyed in for me, just because at that point, I was like, I need another dimension to my team. I need to address some things that I saw that were weak on my team. And I felt like with the Politoed, it gave me another dimension. Yeah, I, I like the Politoed pick. It gives you a special attacker. It gives you some versatility because you can run a choice spec Politoed and it'd be viable for sure. Because you get it out there, it gets the rain up, you get a boosted Scald or Hydro Pump, whatever you want to run. Um, but also, just running a rain, damp rock Politoed could win you a match. Like, you could go against a fire heavy team or something like that, or it could save for Rothborn from an HP fire. It's a it's a great pickup, and I like your next pickup. I almost went with it myself in the same round, <laughs> but I I, I ended up going with I think you wanted the Mon that you wanted. I'm not sure. Um, you didn't specifically stay outright, but I like Dust Noir. The only thing that made me not pick him was his low HP stat. 
because Spiritomb has great defenses like he does, but has 10 points more in defense and is 95-95 in special uh, and physical attack. But Dustin War, I like it. Will Wisp, Bulk, Pain Split, uh, Priority, Elemental Punches. Uh, I, does it get Trick Room? Yeah. It gets Trick Room. Does Meowstic get Trick Room? Yep. So you get Prankster Trick Room. And uh, it doesn't work. Trick Room gets uh, uh, for negative priority. But okay. <laughs> you can see a common theme in that. You can yeah. see a common theme. Because uh, with the exception of a few Mons, your team's slow. Yeah, and and I saw that well ahead of the... Yeah, because you got... Like, your your first three picks were slow Mons. Kelder, Sylveon, Furothorn aren't setting the world on fire with speed. <laughs> um, I think your fastest Mon... Is, how fast is Meloetta? Uh, 128 in the other form. Okay. Um, your fastest mod is probably Gorbis, Meloetta, and Tornadus. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. So I, I like the Dustin pick. Works well with uh, Trick Room. You could definitely run Trick Room, and you could do it effectively. It won't be like a one-time match thing. You could run it for multiple matches, mess with the fast teams, the fast electric types like Jolteon, and the teams like that that rely on speed. You could definitely do that. Um, and your last Pokemon, I, I don't hate it. I don't love it. It's uh, Gorbis. It can baton pass Shell Smash, which is nice. Um, it, it thrives in the rain, which with Politoed, it's a nice addition. I feel like you took it like you took it after you took Politoed. Like you took Politoed and you looked. It's like you know what? Um, I, I have points for this mo- like this tier, and Gorbis works well with Politoed in the rain. So if if I ever need to bring it, or if I ever want someone to set up for a sweep, just send out Gorbis and get it done. Yeah, and. The thing that Gorbis does that other rain Pokemon don't really or could do other than Huntail itself is that it can baton pass too. Yeah. For some matches, it might actually change the match itself. And it, uh, it, like I said, I want to bring a team that is really, really, you have to prepare for each thing. Yeah. And you got to look at the team as a whole and be like, you know what? I don't know what he's going to bring in. For sure. And uh, I felt like I accomplished that with this team. Like I like your team. The only, like I said, the only picks I questioned were actually the only pick I questioned was Meloetta. And I still think I would have invested with a more, uh, maybe specially focused mom. Uh, like, but I understand the bulk. I definitely get that, and I understand uh, why. I, or I maybe wouldn't even have worried about what uh, with the special attacking. It would have gone with a like a cheaper mon so that you could have taken like a higher tier mon like saved points with the Meloetta pick by picking something else a little tier lower so you could have picked an RU mon instead of Gorbis but it worked out fine Gorbis works well with what you have and Meloetta is fine because it's got good special bulk it's got good special attack so it, it worked out perfectly for you um, with how you looked at it but I, I, I would have kind of saved some points or gone with a different mon at Meloetta because it is OUB right or BL UU oh it's UU yeah really Okay, yeah. well, that made it a little better. <laughs> Definitely a little better. Still, I, I still don't know if I would have doubled down the sci- uh, the psychic weakness, but you got plenty of things to handle that weakness. So I, I like the pick a lot more than I did when this first started. But that is the Toronto Star Raptors. And yeah. They they are a heavy-hitting team. Maybe a little too physical, but you know what they say about physical things. They hurt sometimes. So. <laughs> they hurt. That is common. That is a known phrase. I did not just mess up a phrase that didn't exist anyway. So, <laughs> um, Yeah, so I guess this sort of ends the red division in general. We are in the Kanto. Uh, once again, this is one of the toughest divisions that I've, in personal, personnel-wise, that I've seen. Yeah. Um, there's, there's no denying that. There's two of the people who made it into the semifinals and finals. Um, and then me. I'm just a random person. Before the end of this video, I want to point out two picks have been made in the B-League drafts at this point of recording this. So, just a little fun relation to when we're recording this to when it'll be posted. Ooh, all right. Uh, so, should we end it up over here, or do you want to make those mentions right now? Oh, the picks? Um, sure. The first... Ah. Oh, wait. What are you talking about? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Announced. The first pick was Zelda, the Zagreb's Angooses, and they took Keldeo. Um, solid pick. Cost him 180 points. I thought Keldeo was OUB, but solid pick. Um, I forgot who their Mega was, so I don't know how it works team-wise. And a, a pick I like a lot, um, the Toronto Chestnuts, um, the Toronto farm team. I don't know. It's not actually a farm team. That, that sounds like I'm uh, knocking them down. But they're 
just as good as the Star Raptors. Um, they suck. The Star Raptors do. Uh, the Chestnuts Same. took Scizor, and I like that pick because their mega is Deontzi, so no Scizors are going to be bullet punching them for four times effective bullet punches. So I like that Not pick bad. a lot. Not bad. So, Plus default. So we'll end it off over here. So this is Cap signing off, and we're going to talk about some other league next time. Yeah. Bye. Bye.